There was a point during my high school days where everyone was obsessed with Danganronpa. People went to the premise, the wacky characters, and I saw many cosplays of those characters in conventions when those were still a thing. Personally, I was a more zero skip type of guy myself when it came to visual novels that were based around the high staked death game premise. Go ahead, call me edgy, but what can I say, it just pulled me a lot more. But when it came to characters, it's pretty clear that people during that time leaned towards the bright colorful designs in Danganronpa. And that leads me to Rui Komatsuzaki, the character designer for the Danganronpa games. Since these games were what was in at the time, I got sucked in a bit and dabbled into the story and characters and I'm well informed about the lore. So to section up this video, I'll be talking about the cast of characters for each of the games while taking note of any artistic points that I find interesting. And why not? I'll say which cast of characters I like the best. So let's get started. Oh, and by the way, there are slight spoilers for all the Danganronpa games. So leave if you wish to not be spoiled. The first game, where it all started. Initially, I thought a game with a cast of 15 or 16 characters would give me a hard time in differentiating names, designs, to even their ultimates. But all the designs are pretty unique and memorable, that I'm not confusing other characters for others in the cast. The games all have characters that have distinct talents about them, in which they were the best at, and in turn are called ultimates, or super high school level students if you guys were here when the fan translations were all that we got. Makoto Nayagi, the protagonist, is the ultimate lucky student. Since luck is a pretty enigmatic thing, it helps that he is the self insert character for the player. Brown spiky hair, hoodie with school uniform jacket, it's all part for the main character package. And can't forget the hoge, something staple for all the protagonists in the series. One thing that I try to keep in mind for the franchise is that do their designs match with their ultimate, or at least convey enough information about themselves that coincides with their ultimate, and some do exactly that. You do get the biker gang vibe from Mondo with his pompadour hairstyle, and with Sakura's buff body, you can infer that she's the ultimate fighter. Byakuya is sleek and classy, which is fitting for the ultimate affluent progeny, and I guess you could assume Hifumi's some sort of otaku if you take Japan's image of them into account, which bleeds into him being a fanfic writer, I guess. You could tell Aoi's into sports from a red tracksuit and knee brace, fitting for the ultimate swimmer. In short, for some of them, you could give a wild guess as to what their talent is from just the designs, and it's always fun to see people guess what it is before being told. There are some designs that don't tell you too much, say like Leon, Kyoko, Sayaka, Chihiro, Toko, Kiyotaka. <laughs> That's actually a lot. But since they aren't wearing much that gives away what their talent is, I don't think that you'd be able to tell much from it. Like, you wouldn't think Chihiro is a programmer, or that Toka is a writer or anything like that. Unless you consider glasses being enough information to have you think that she's into literature. But um, Byakuya is also wearing glasses, and so is Hifumi, so um, no. And Leon doesn't look like a baseball player, Sayaka doesn't really look like a pop idol, and Kiyotaka is just looks like a student like these aren't bad designs they just don't tell what the ultimate is and as for kyoko she's supposed to be mysterious at first so i'll let her design slide but i don't really see a detective from that either unless you count the gloves being something detective-esque and then there are the very extra designs like yasuhiro and celeste which has another layer of variety to the cast obviously the character designs do get better with the following games but as a first one, it's not bad. One thing that I do want to point out though is the painting style. It is very distinct, like you are not going to find anyone else that remotely draws, colors, or paints like Komotozaki. He lays on colors very thick, similar to that of oil painting. There are some areas that do look a bit primitive, such as the creases and folds on the clothes, and even the hair looks a bit tacked on. However, it is said that this is his first attempt at doing character designs, so I can let all this go, considering that he does get better with this in the later games. Danganronpa 2, my favorite. While I may not like all the characters in this game, I do enjoy the dynamic that each of them have with each other. The protagonist this time around is Hanjime Hinata, and in comparison to Makoto, I would say that his design is even more plainer. However, it plays well into his backstory, and the real one we do figure that he is, in fact, just a normal guy and not actually an ultimate. Well, we get swerved with him being revealed to be the ultimate hope, but that's besides the point. 
The other characters, however, are just as colorful as the previous cast. We've got characters like Kazuichi with his pink hair and yellow jumpsuit, and Hyoko with a kimono, and Terutero with his classic chef's outfit. And yes, the designs are just as wacky as the previous game, but I do think some of them still suffer from not really conveying what their talent is. Although one can see it as a good thing, making the characters very unassuming, so like Gundam. You really don't see the ultimate breeder when you look at him, but I think that is his charm. And you could say the same thing for Fuyuhiko considering that he is the ultimate Yakuza while having a baby face. There are more obvious ones like Mikan being the ultimate nurse, and again Tarutaru being the ultimate chef, and Peko being the ultimate swordsman. We have the classical buff one with Nekomaru which gives the players the idea that his ultimate talent is sports related with him being the ultimate coach. And although you can't tell what Kane is just by looking at her, if we haphazardly compare it to Aoi, we can guess that her talent is also sports related, with her case being the ultimate gymnast. Chiaki doesn't give away ultimate gamer vibes, unless you consider the Galaga hairpin to be enough to convey that. There's also Byakuya, who's fat now, but that actually coincides with the story and his actual talent being the ultimate imposter. Ibuki, the ultimate musician, does have dyed hair, which you can associate with rock stars, and Sonya's outfit does have a not Japanese feeling about it, but Ultimate Princess? Hmm, I mean, I can see it now, but then again, I know everyone's ultimate talent already, so it's very hard to keep an objective stance with the designs. Same goes with Nagito. I think Ultimate student when I look at him, but then again, how do you really represent luck? One thing that I do want to mention with the character designs that all the games fulfill is the silhouette criteria. If we turn all the designs into silhouettes, we could still make out who the characters are, which is usually the mark of a really good design. This really drives in the point that you can't always consider hair color, eye shape, and shallow things like that as good design, lest you end up with boring repetitive shapes. <sighs> Danganronpa V3 Now mechanically, this is obviously the best game, but I'm not a game reviewer, I'm an art reviewer. Although I do want to say this, in terms of personalities and character traits, I hate the majority of this cast, except for maybe Shuichi and Kokichi, but that's besides the point. The advertised protagonist for this game is Kaede, but for everyone that has played this game past chapter 1 knows the real protagonist is Shuichi, and between him, Hajime, and Makoto, he is personally my favorite out of all the protagonists. His design is such a major contrast from the other two, and unlike them, he has a reason for being the one to solve all the trials. I never really got why Makoto and Hajime were just technically the smart ones in the group, but for Shuichi, being the ultimate detective, it makes sense. And just like the previous two games, we have our buff one being Gonta, our dark skinned female being Angie, and our weird ones being Ryoma and or Korokio. I won't go over all the characters since it will just follow the same beats as my previous sections, but personally, this game has my favorite designs in general, despite my distaste for the cast. I'd also like to mention that at this point, Komotozaki has refined his art stuff from where it once was. If you compare the folds he painted in the first game to the ones he paints now, you can see it forms better around the body. His overall painting just looks a lot more cleaner than it once was. Before Danganronpa became the game we now know, it was first called Distrust. It was much more dark and gritty and the designs were not half as colorful. But I'm not gonna lie, I can't help but feel I would slightly prefer this version than what we got. You can see the initial designs of the characters we've come to know them as now. And speaking of initial designs, you can see that Komatsuzaki goes through many iterations of a character to get them just right. For example, this initial of Hajime looks a lot like what would later become Shuichi, and this initial design looks a lot like Chihiro. From these sketches, you could tell what Komatsuzaki was thinking in terms of the relationship between the characters between the games. I'm not going to really get too deep into the designs for Ultra Despair Girls because 1. The characters are pretty flat and one-off, and I sort of don't care too much about it. And I'm definitely not going to talk about the Danganronpa 3 anime because f*** the anime. It was a terrible way to end up the whole speech saga. Go ahead, call me unprofessional, I don't care. Side note, in the beginning of this video I mentioned how no one paints like him, however that's kinda a lie. The funny thing about his style is that many people love to replicate it. I can't tell you how many times I ran into Danganronpa OCs painted in his style. Some are easy to spot while others have literally perfected his style. I could talk about how for better or for worse this is, but that's another discussion for another video. So yeah, that's Ruiko Motozaki. 
he has these downloadable art books if you want to support and I also checked to see if he had a Twitter and I have found nothing. I'm just trying to cover my bases since I know you guys become detectives when finding material that I could not find. If I'm missing something, just comment down below and thank you for catching anything that I may have missed. There's also the games too if you want to play them, and I'm especially glad that a lot more YouTubers and streamers have been getting into the games as of late, especially since the visual novel genre is a bit hard to get into with those massive walls of text. Thank you for watching this iteration of Artist Analysis, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello YouTube, yeah, it's me after the video, um, yeah, I'm back, it's, it's been a while, I th I've been gone for I think a bit over a month now, um, the reason being is that, one, um, I realized that Camtasia was giving my videos a constant audio hiccup, and I absolutely hated that, so, um, due to a friend, thank you Carlos, um, for giving me Adobe Premiere Pro, um, it took me some time to actually get to know the ins and outs of this program, which added more time to make this video, and um, just making these videos just takes a long time in general. So um, yeah, I finally got it done, and yeah, I'm back. I hope to upload more videos coming up. I do not intend to be gone for another month's time. I've, if possible, I want to be on a schedule, say for say about a video a week, um, definitely not an artist analysis video a week, That's not, <laughs> these videos take a long time to make, um, whether it be a uh, speed paint, a video essay, some art related thing, um, I do intend to at least try to upload once a week. Um, thank you for anyone that sticked around and for the people that are commenting, um, once again I got a mini small influx of subscribers. There was a comment that actually said, I can't believe you don't have 50k subs. And that made me think like, wow, I really can make it to 50k, shouldn't I? So um, there's that. And again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.